Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and like many of you out there um, I've got an urge to throw some dice around and so I've been looking at ways of solo gaming um, and one thing I've come up with is using bolt action firefight um, so that's what I'm going to do. What I'm planning is a sort of a small narrative campaign just to see how well firefight works uh, using solo. Um, I mean, I've seen quite a few people that, that, that play Bolt Action, the main game, solo, um, you know, quite regularly, and it. I think it's got the mechanic to do that really well. Well, what I want to do though, is just make a series of videos, sort of shorter videos, um, using the firefight rules. Um, so I've been thinking about it, and this will be the very first, the very first game. So what, what's the plan? So I'm going to set it in um, early war. So we're talking. Uh, France 1940 and the, the, the invasion of France. Now I'm doing things a little bit different. It's just to keep it more narrative um, and, and just a more kind of streamlined or quicker way to get games um, completed. So what I'm going to be doing to start off with is just having these as the uh, as the opposing sides. So it's just going to be five dudes, so five French infantrymen and five German infantrymen. Um, no high officers, anything like that. Um, and there can be one NCO in each sort of squad, so to speak, that will be able to issue orders um, at the six inch command range. Um, another thing I'm going to change is, is weapon range. It's not going to change them, but I'm going to be playing on a, on a, I've not decided yet where it's going to be two and a half by two and a half or three by three feet. So with weapons, what I'm going to do is have an effective range. So with for rifles, it's up to 12 inches. Anything over 12 inches is going to be minus one. Uh, I don't like the idea of weapons just arbitrarily stopping at a given distance. <laughs> um, rifle uh, and a, 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 a table size that big, rifles are always going to be in range. Same with LMGs. So that's another way thing I'm going to be doing is just keeping all weapons will be in range, but there'll be modifiers for firing it over less than effective range. Um, so the, the squads themselves, I'm going to touch on them later on in the video, uh, in the introduction, as I've given each, each section member has got a name, and this will, this will allow me to chart their progress through a number of different encounters. Um, but composition is the French have got one NCO, uh, one LMG team, and two riflemen, and they'll be rated as regular. And the Germans will be veteran, all armed with rifles. Um, where this is... With the balancing issues, I'm not quite sure. It's going to be the first game, so I'm just going to see how it works. Um, and plus, it's <laughs> when I was trying to work out how to do this, I've not got very many opposing armies um, to fight against each other. So I went with what I had. So I've used five Germans that I use as Austrian and five of my recently painted French infantry. Um, so they are. So the French are regular, Germans are veteran. Um, now, at the end of the game, or at the end of the encounter, um, if people have been killed, so to speak, they may not be fully out of the game. What I'm going to do for everyone that's taken out or, or who goes out of action during a game, I'm going to roll a dice at the end of, of each encounter. On a one, that's it. They're gone. They are out of there. They are dead. Uh, two to five, they fully recovered. It was a minor flesh wound or just a, a very close thing that made them made them wince slightly. Roll of a six, however, is an injury. Now, I want to keep the injuries quite quite basic as well, just to see. I'm thinking of fleshing these out. I just want to see how they go to start off with. But injury chart, again, it's a roll of a d6. Um, one to two, uh, it's a leg injury. So in the next next game, it's a minus one to movement. Uh, roll of a three to four, it's an arm wound, which is a minus one to hit um, moving forward. And five to six is a head or a chest wound, which means that individual will start every, every subsequent encounter with one permanent pin marker and they will always have that pin marker on man no matter how many they get rid of uh, during the game they will always have one pin marker on there which would be bad for shooting and taking tests etc so what we do now is just run through um, the two forces um, and the individual names so on the screen now will be the Germans and uh, the Germans are led by NCO uh, Pierre Passero um, the LMG gunner is Thomas Rousse uh, his loader is Lucien Landry. Uh, one rifleman is called Patrice Gachet. And the last dude is called Maurice Aubert. Um, now the, the actual encounter is taking place um, on the, the kind of the border um, in a village called, a fictional village called Merval. Uh, and the first, the first fight is going to take, uh, take place on the, sort of the outskirts of the village. And it's just going to be a, a basic 
encounter. Um, so the charge of the Germans, the Germans will be on screen now. So they are led by uh, their NCO is Victor Haugwitz. And um, from left to right, we have Reinhard Schoener, Bastian Neumeyer, Wolf Prager, and Felix Sondheim. So these are all veterans of the Polish campaign um, now taking part in the, uh, the invasion of France in 1940. So like I said, the plan is to have a very, very basic encounter at the very beginning. And then I think I'll be playing for eight turns and I'm going to end it there um, unless one side runs off or, or generally gives up. Um, now the winning section or the winning, the winning nation, the next game that follows will be a what, what I'm going to call seize the momentum. So they've fought the opposition away, but they want to know what's going on. So the next game will be a, a prisoner grab. So again, a very small, very small firefight-esque game where the objective of the attacking force will be to subdue um, an enemy in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat um, and get that individual back off the table. Um, and then from there, there'll be more branches and diversions for different games. So is it going to work? I don't know, but it should be a lot of fun finding out. So what I'm going to do now is um, go away, play the game. What I'm going to do is update at the end of each turn, like I did on the last battle report. But as it's a smaller narrative game, I'm going to make each kind of turn wrap up a bit more detail, a bit more narrative and a bit more story driven, um, which is what I think Firefight is really good for. So, um, on to the, what I'll do is I'll do a, the next thing will be a, a sort of um, an overview of what the table looks like. I'm, gonna, I'm hopefully going to use plenty of terrain to make it really built up. And then it'll be a, a turn by turn uh, after action report. So I shall see you in a little bit. Hello and welcome to the village of Mervel, France 1940. As you can see, I've set up a quite a small playing area. It's about... It's about two and a half, just over two and a half feet by two and a half feet. So we have ploughed fields, a inn or a tavern, a bit of an orchard there. More ploughed fields and a road and the village church. Um, pretty much everything is going to be um, soft cover. Um, there's light fences, there's uh, hedgerows, bushes, etc. Um, if troops enter either of the two buildings, obviously the, the, the building rules will come into effect then. But that is the village. Well, the light's okay in here. I don't want to get the, uh, <laughs> get the old lamp out again. Um, but there we are. That is the village of Mervel, which the two sides will be fighting over today. So like I said in the introduction, um, it's just going to be a, a firefight on the outskirts of the village. Um, there'll be a, a very brief after after turn report in a sort of narrative way, just to outline exactly what happened. Um, and then at the end of the game, we will I will check for casualties and injuries. And then um, after that, I'll play. I'll, I won't be today, obviously, but I'll um, I'll move on to playing the second part of the narrative campaign. So I hope this goes well. Should be a bit of a bit of fun, it's been a bit different, um, but there we are, that's the village. So I shall be back presently uh, to describe the action that happened in turn one. So see you all soon. So as the uh, the mists of, of the dawn fade away, the two sides have begun to encounter each other on the outskirts of Mervel. Very cagey opening encounter, uh, but there has been, has been some crucial action. So the initiative was largely taken by the French who rushed on um, a rifleman here, Gachet, and um, Passero, the NCO. Um, and that was to meet a, a German rifleman down there, a single rifleman. Shots was exchanged, so um, the first shot came from Neumeyer at the far end of the, uh, of the lane. He took a shot at uh, Gachet and missed. Uh, Passero, the French NCO, in turn took a shot back at Neumeyer and missed. Over on this flank, Schoener, who, yeah, I'll get to him in a minute, um, he cautiously advanced through the ploughed field and took a shot at the rifleman here, Aubert, and missed. But the crucial action came in a couple of seconds. The uh, section's LMG gunner, Rousey, 
advanced on by himself, no loader, knowing it was a disadvantage in operating the LMG by himself. He identified the threat from Scherner over here, opened up his LMG requiring, it was a difficult shot, um, with the upshot being Scherner was hit, struck, and he's down. First casualty of the encounter. So Scherner, we don't know what's up with him. Is he dead? Is he wounded? But he's bleeding out there in a corner of the ploughed field. Um, seeing the, the, the plight of their, their comrade, the rest of the German section all advanced on, taking pot shots at the advancing French infantry, but no hits were scored. Um, so what was decidedly a cagey, a cagey opening um, series of shots was definitely brought to life by the actions of Rousey uh, in taking down Scherner over there. So this flank is now being held by um, Sondheim. Sondheim actually had a, a shot back at Rousse, um and missed. So is he going to avenge his fallen comrade? Is he going to stand his ground? We shall see in the next round. But straight away, it's advantage to the French infantry in, in the defence of Merval. So with that being said, I shall see you at the end of turn two. So see you soon. And so the battle rages on with the, the French seizing uh, initiative at the, um, with the second round of action. Um, LMG gunner here, Rousse, who took out Scherner um, in the previous round of fighting, um, he seized the initiative and straight away he was blasting away with his LMG um, over here, where um, Sondheim was behind the, um, the hedgerow there. Um, scored two hits, hit Sondheim twice, failed to wound um, the German Lancer though, and um, just he just incurred one pin. Um, again, the French quick to seize the initiative. Aubert here, he rushed forward and took cover behind the um, the splintered wooden fence around the uh, the ploughed field. He too targeted the uh, the, the now pinned Sondheim and, and loosed away with his rifle, but unfortunately was was unable to um, to land any shots. Um, seeing the danger that was that was happening on this flank, uh, the German NCO Haugwitz here, um, he, he sprung into action, issuing orders all over the place. So he ordered um, Praga to uh, advance into the, uh, the ploughed field here, while he himself um, steadied his rifle and took a long range shot at uh, Passero here. Uh, NCO against NCO. Unfortunately, his shot was wild and um, Passero escaped unscathed. Praga here um, in the in the ploughed field. He again, he, he obeyed his NCO's commands to, to strengthen up this flank and he targeted um, Gache here um, but missed. Um, with, with uh, not, not Gashi, this is Aubert. Aubert hunkered down behind the fence here. Um, so that was that was Praga's, Praga's shot going wild. Sondheim, who'd come under fire from the LMG behind this, uh, behind this hedge here, he needed to take some action. So he, um, he passed an order test, he shared his pin. He leapt over the, um, the, the hedge with gusto, took up a firing position here behind this hedge and open up on Aubert. Uh, he managed to hit the Frenchman, um, no kill them, so Aubert has, has now got a pin. Over here, Gache, seeing the threat that Sondheim was um, causing to the, the, the infantry on this side, he advanced through the ploughed field, again taking up a firing position behind uh, an old wooden fence. Uh, he got Sondheim in his sights, fired, Unfortunately, he missed as well. So Sondheim set his pin, and he's now hungered down behind that um, behind that hedgerow there. So Son Sondheim is he's in the thick of things. Um, and fresh French NCO uh, Passero here again decided to um, take a shot at uh, Neumeyer. Now Neumeyer is here, but he was behind the the, uh, the hedgerow here. He missed um, Neumeyer. Sensing the danger that this this flank was in, uh, worked his way around this um, this hedgerow, 
here and targeted Gache, who is situated here behind the um, behind the fence in the plough field. Again, he should, he'd closed the range, but the shot was wild and and he missed. And that was the um, was the the closing shot of the second round. So it's all heating up. Um, both both flanks are being contested by both sides. Um, Aubert has a pin here. Um, can Rosé repeat his his excellent shooting so far in this in this dawn encounter outside the um, the village of Mervel? We shall find out in the third round. So we'll go back to Mervel, and it just got bloody. So let's see what happened in that in that that round of shooting. So we started over here where the the now brave Sondheim took the initiative, um, and he aimed a shot at, oh, at, at Rousey, sensing the danger that the, um, the light machine gunner is having on this flank. He raised his rifle, aim shot, fire order. He hit Rousey, but was unable to do any damage, and so Rousey was subsequently pinned. Um, Aubert, on this flank here, sensing the danger that Sondheim could possibly cause, attempted to rally and shed his pin, and he failed his order test. And so he is down. He went down and retained that pin. Um, over on this flank, Passero no longer directing from the um, the rear of the battle, advanced up into the ploughed field here and took a shot at Neumeyer, who was just just close to this copse of trees here, out in the open. Again, raised his rifle, steadied his aim, but was unable to hit the um, the German infantryman. Um, Neumeyer, in turn, sensing the danger that the NCO was causing, advanced through the trees here, aimed his rifle, took a shot at Passero, hit, and the French NCO is down. He's bleeding out and floundering here in this ploughed field. What will happen to him, we'll find out at the end of the encounter. But that, at that point, that was two, uh, one casualty on each side. So Rosé here again sensing the danger that this, this flank was in, bravely rallied, he shed his pin and again opened up with his, um, his LMG at Sondheim who was, who was lurking behind this, this hedgerow here. Uh, his unerring accuracy didn't, didn't fail him again and he hit Sondheim with a total of three hits. Um, this was just too much and Sondheim, the infantryman went down Again, we don't know what's happened to him. He's, he's down behind this hedgerow um, and we'll find out at the end of the encounter exactly what's happened to Sondheim. But for the foreseeable future, he is out of this battle. Um, over on this flank, Gache, seeing his NCO taken down by Neumeyer here. Stood his ground, again raised his rifle, aimed at Neumeyer and missed. Uh, Gache is not having the greatest of encounters at this point, uh, I need to point that out. <laughs> Uh, but Neumeyer survived, um, which left the initiative now with the German sub so Praga, who was in this ploughed field. He leapt across the um, the hedgerow, across the country lane, and took took cover next to his fallen comrade Sondheim. Again, sensing the danger that that, that Rousey is causing, um, he popped above the um, the hedgerow, fired off a couple of snapshots at the French LMG. Um, gunner, but to no avail, he missed. And the last action of the round was the German NCO Haugwitz here, leaving cover, sprinting across this lane here and targeting Gache. Uh, again, his firing let him down, and Gache remains unscathed. But there we are at the end of at the end of the the, the third round of um, uh, of battle. Um, the Germans have lost two men, so another another loss, and it's going to be might possibly be break time. Um, but the French have lost their NCO, which is never a good move. So up next will be the, the fourth round of battle outside the village of Mervel. So we'll, I'll see you all for that soon. Well, that's the end of round four and things are looking decidedly bleak for the Germans at this stage. So again, as has been quite prominent in this encounter, the, the French seized the initiative and uh, Rousey here targeted Praga, who was 
next to the uh, the fallen Sondheim opened up with his LMG uh, every shot was a hit and Praga went down next to Sondheim so that reduced the the German force to just two two men remaining uh, a brake test was taken and very 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 closely passed so the Germans were still in the fight at this stage um, Neumeyer still hunkered down in this copse here targeted Gache and missed not the greatest of, uh, of games here from Neumeyer Haugwitz over here he again stood his ground took a shot at Gache still hunkered down in this um, this this wheat field here behind this fence again Haugwitz missed so the the shooting has not been on par on this flank um, I'll say that much Aubert on this flank here so he passed an order test and he advanced over the um, the fence and into standing quite bravely in the middle of the country lane uh, and targeted um, Neumeyer again hidden in these in these trees here but unfortunately Aubert missed and the last shot of the round was uh, was Gache choice of targets Neumeyer or um, Haugwitz over here he chose the NCO um, landed a shot but was unable to do any damage to the uh, the German NCO who just incurred a pin and that was the end of round four um, if this gets past round six I'll be very surprised because I've got a feeling that it's not going to be healthy for the Germans to stick around after the following turn but it's close so the Germans could rally um, but it's looking it's looking quite bleak for them at present so the Battle of Mervel continues and I shall see you at the end of round five. So see you soon. So round five has come to an end and again, significant action has been has been um, undertaken. So the term was seized by, the initiative was, was seized by um, Neumeyer. Again, he's hunkered down this copse here and he targeted Aubert. Again, he was just bravely and very brazenly stood out in the middle of a country lane. Um, and again missed uh, i think i think some time at the, the the firing range may be suitable for uh for neumeyer if he survives as a counter but Aubert, yeah he survived that without a scratch haugwitz over here yeah so he he had a pin from from being shot at previously he shed his pin he advanced into the cop to take up um a position next to his uh, his comrade neumeyer here and he targeted gache Who'd been? Who'd spent most of the encounter um, hidden behind this fence in the plough field? This time, Haugwitz's shot was true. His aim was good, and Gache was taken down. So he is currently down in this in this um, this wheat field here. We, we don't know what his current status is. We'll find out later. But that brought the casualty rate from um, from one to two for the French. So, so three two overall. Uh, Aubert here decided to again target Neumeyer here in the cops and missed a fairly easy shot but yeah here he blew his opportunity there and Neumeyer survived but the man of the hour Rosé the LMG gunner here he advanced round onto the corner of the air uh, the wheat field and targeted um, Neumeyer um, in these trees and let fly with his LMG scoring four hits uh, his 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 firing has been deadly, let's put it that way. Um, he scored. So two were, were wounding hits. Um, I hope I got the rules for sustained or um, automatic fire here. But I allocated a hit to both Neumeyer and Haugwitz. Um, but both just took a pin. Um, actually, I'm, I'm talking rubbish there. He fired, he hit twice out of the four shots. Um, one shot one shot was allocated to each uh, each of the Germans and each took a pin rather than getting killed and that was the, um, the last fire of round five so what I might do is just play one play round six and then well I think we'll call it quit at the end of that because it's getting it's getting very close now so but I think I think round six will be, will be a natural end as the four has begin to fade away. So that's what we'll do. So I'll see you at the end of round six. Well, that is the end of the game. And round six was a very short, very brutal and very violent encounter. So the initiative was seized by Man of the Hour Rousey. 
um, and he couldn't he couldn't let up the opportunity to again let loose at Neumeyer and Haugwitz who were holed up in this copse of trees here and just like the rest of the um, the rest of the battle his aim was very very true and deadly and accurate with the upshot being uh, four hits um, spread across for the the two of um, the two soldiers in cover here Haugwitz and Neumeyer both went down and that was the end of the encounter with all five Germans bleeding out on the battlefield so the French have, have fought off the um, the Germans in this very brief incursion a short firefight they will hurriedly uh, take Passero and Gachet back to the uh, the field hospital um, and the the German uh, medics will be forward to, to drag these poor unfortunate souls back to the um, the, uh, the field ambulance on the German lines and we will see exactly what happened to all of these casualties. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap it up. I'll do the, um, the after battle uh, housekeeping, see what's happened to these guys and I'll be back with the end of the game. So see you in a little bit. Hello and welcome to the after action report um, following the earlier battle of Mervell. so all um casualty dice have been rolled and and the upshot is pretty much everyone came through unscathed except there was one casualty on each side so unfortunately uh, gachet from the french infantry um is no longer with us neither is praga from the german side so they both they both succumb to their wounds and will no longer for them the war is over <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, all the other, other, all other casualties came through um, unscathed. Um, so what I'll do is I'll create two new to bulk these out. I'll, I'll move on to the next uh, stage of the narrative campaign. Um, what are my overall impressions? I think the firefight rules work really well. Um, I mean that that game. Uh, it took less than an hour uh, to to get through, and it was. I like the, the I like the. The, the the rapidity how fast it was it it really did convey that um sort of close range firefight um theme yeah it was really good it's quite thematic as well it felt felt like a comic book adventure rather than a, a sort of a lumbering battle it was a, a really short sharp shock of a of a battle really enjoyed it um and it didn't feel from a solo point of view it was i, I was trying to make the narrative um play play more than the actual uh, oh i'm playing a game um try to make it exciting and just do what 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 would naturally have come to the um to the guys involved i think it went quite well um one thing i have learned is that lmgs are brutal <laughs> absolutely brutal in this game uh so rosé was definitely um it was the mvp from that encounter with his with his lmg um I'll see how it does in the next game, but I might have to look at balancing that out because, yeah, he was he was spitting death all over the place. But for the for a first um, a first try, I'm quite happy with how it went. Um, I hope oh everyone enjoyed it. Like I said, in this in these strange times, I think a lot of us are going to be solo gaming, and I just thought this would be quite a good idea um, rather than play a full game of ball touch and just have like a nice a nice narrative a, a nice narrative campaign uh, over five or six games. Um, with hopefully, <laughs> well, apart from those two, the same, the same guys progressing and really building up as characters uh, through the campaign. But I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the game. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them in the comments section below and I'll certainly respond to all comments and questions. But as always, thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, me and Dice are all well and I'll catch you all in the next video. So bye bye for now.